Hey there, welcome to Verve, church for people who don't like church. My name is Peyton. Hey, and I'm Margaret. And we just wanna take, take a quick second and say, Happy Father's Day. To all you fathers out there, you guys are the best. We love everything that you do. Thank you for everything. Happy Father's Day Sunday. That's right. And today we are concluding our teaching series called Hot Ones. And during this series, we've been talking about some pretty hot topics. Um, it's either topics that are really important to our lives or things that we just don't talk about very often. Absolutely. And if you've been with us at all during this series, you know that we've been uh, filming our own version of the YouTube show, Hot Ones, where we eat hot wings and ask questions to get to know each other a little bit better. And so this week is all about our worship director, Abner. And so you're going to get to know Abner a little bit better, get to get to see him a little bit off of stage, off of leading worship. So uh, check this out and get to know Abner just a little bit better. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Vince Antonucci, lead pastor of Verve Church, and this is Hot Ones, where we have hot questions and even hotter wings. Joining me today is Abner Ortiz, the creative arts pastor of Verve. Welcome, Abner. Thank you for having me. Tell me, me man, how are you with, uh, with the spiciness? Man, I think I could do mild, but I don't think I could do hot, to be honest with you. Well, I, th I think you're gonna, you're gonna try. Let's so find let's, out. Let's just check out this first one. It says the flavor that kicks you in the mouth. So let's Let's uh, give our mouse a little kick here. I don't like being kicked in the mouth. <laughs> so Abner, would you uh, just start up, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your job here. Yeah, so I actually uh, grew up in Southern California. Uh, I'm married, my wife's name is Denise. Uh, we have a two-year-old daughter and we have a baby boy on the way that's due in August. Uh, that's awesome. I'm the creative arts pastor here at Verb. And one thing that I really love about working with the band and the production team it's just how it honestly just intertwines and I get to work with um, so many awesome people and just watching people grow and watching people just develop their relationship with each other. It's it's honestly just so cool to see. That's really cool. All right, we're gonna move on to some uh, ghost pepper blueberry. Blueberries are good. Yeah, but ghost peppers are not. <laughs> just full. We're gonna do a speed round, lightning round with you. Some quick questions, you ready? Ready. So, let's say you were stuck in an elevator mm -hmm. for 10 hours and there was a song on repeat the whole time. You had to listen to the same song. What song would it be? It would be uh, Won't Stop Me Now by Queen. You'd be Just dancing. Hearing Freddie hours. Mercury's voice for 10 hours. Okay. Like, yeah, I, no, that, can't, that can't get old. Okay. If there's one weird thing everyone should try at least once, what would it be? It would definitely be cow tongue tacos. It sounds weird, but it's it's really, really cow good. Cow tongue taco. Okay, yeah. I'll try. I'll, it's I'll, really good. I think it'd be better than this. And Abner, we ask everyone this question. What's your favorite curse word? My favorite curse word I'll say is yeah. Abner. <laughs> okay, uh, Abner, we're moving on to this bad boy. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be good. It can't Abner. be good. It can't be good. <laughs> Abner. <laughs> We got a hold of your phone and we found this picture. I wanted you to explain what we're seeing here. <clears throat> this picture was uh, me and my, one of my good friends. Uh, we went to Europe, we went to a couple different cities. On the first day, maybe within three hours, we were gonna get a rental car. And when he swept his card, I guess he didn't tell his bank that we were going to a different country, so the car got locked. Uh, and to my surprise, he didn't bring as much money as <laughs> I thought he had. and so. It, Essentially, he became my date for the rest of the trip. So not a bad, not a bad first date to go to Europe. <laughs> and on and the other guy, all expenses the other paid. Guy, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the last uh, sauce is de bomb. Um, oh. It's not, it's not good, man. You ready? Let's I'm ready. go. Abner, last question. Mm. Um, I know you've been uh, in bands and sang in, in bands and played drums in bands that have, that have toured. America and Mexico. Do you have any great stories from the road? You probably have some fun stories, like bands. Oh, the house. Oh. <laughs> it just keeps going up your mouth. It, then, like you're like, what are these? Are these jowls? <laughs> Whatever this is. I can feel it in my. Oh my goodness. I can feel it in my throat, like really well. So, any fun stories from the road? Yeah, one, one really good one. We were in a in a hotel in, in, a, in a city in Mexico, and out of nowhere, somebody started knocking on the door really, really hard. And when we opened the door, it was this huge shoulder with this big gun, and a bunch of helicopters were going around the city. Oh my goodness! 
<laughs> and he told us that there had been like a bank, a bank robbery close by. And then while this, all this was happening, one of our friends was in the shower, just like just singing. Just I don't know why, like he was just singing. But and then when he asked us all for our documents, and then he heard the gap, but he didn't really like, give him really any any attention. And when he left, we realized that the door had never been locked. Even when we tried to lock it, the door would never lock. So we were at the city for maybe three to four days. The door had actually never been locked. Wow. Yeah. That sounds scary, but not as bad as eating the bomb. Oh, but yeah. look at you, Abner. You made it four wings up, four wings down. You don't look good, but, but you made it. Oh. And so why don't you look at that camera and say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Oh man, poor Abner. <laughs> hey, hey, he did all right, man. If, you, if you've missed any of our, our Hot Ones videos, uh, all of us on staff here have done them. You can check out our YouTube at Verve Vegas. If you search that on YouTube, you'll find us. Check out those Hot Ones videos. They're actually pretty entertaining. That's right. And now Tony is going to talk to us about our hot topic today. He's going to talk to us about the hot question you can ask about your spiritual life. Check this out. We walked into an Irish bar, and this was the kind of music that was playing. There's a couple Irish bars on the Strip and around Vegas. Maybe you've been to one of those, or maybe you've been in Dublin. You've gotten to see it. People are usually in a great mood in these places. You know, you got a pint of Guinness, and you're loving the music. I mean, listen to that. Like, you can't, you can't be in a bad mood with this kind of music pumping in the background. Well, we walked through the crowded bar, which is great people watching place like I almost tripped over people because I was just watching everybody who was in the in the place as we passed them and then one of the guys that I was with had been to this place before and he led us through to an upstairs spot which was a little bit quieter we ordered some dinner uh, we talked about golf that's why we were there we were, we were, we were hanging out we we're playing golf and we had just played golf earlier that day. We're gonna play the next day. So we are in like <laughs> the best mood. Everybody's in a great mood. Well, let me tell you about these guys. So right here, sitting across from me was a guy named Coop. He's a successful business dude from Ohio. He's been a Christ follower for a long time and he, he really, he gets it. He's solid, uh, really humble, humble faith. And then his buddy, Steve, is right next to him. And they've been business partners for 30 years, and they're also really good friends. Um, they're they're kind of like best friends, you know? Been together for a long time, hanging out together, all that stuff. Steve is a no-nonsense, tough-minded kind of a guy. In the last few years, he took a buyout from his partnership with Coop and his wife in their business. And the reason he took the buyout was to take care of his aging mom. So even though he's tough-minded and so he's got a sensitive side and he really wants to live well. He'd be the first one to tell you that he doesn't have God. He's not even really, he doesn't have God figured out yet. He doesn't have faith figured out yet. Um, and then right next to me is Johnny Bosco. You can just picture him by the name. John has been a Baptist pastor for the last 34 years. Uh, we went to college together. We, we like to play golf together, really strong faith. And this guy knows the Bible forward and back. So we're all sitting together in this place. Music is downstairs. It's still semi-loud. Awesome conversation that we had that night is a lot like the conversation that we're going to talk about today. In fact, I thought a lot about that conversation as I was getting ready for today. Each one of us around that table is at a different stage in our relationship with God, and we talked about it. And all around the table, different stories, different hearts, different challenges, and we're all learning to relate to the same God. Well, it's just like that with all of us watching right now. We're all at different stages in our spiritual lives. So let's just start there. We all have a spiritual life. Have you ever thought about that? 
you have a spiritual dimension to you. Just like you have a physical body and you have a complex emotional side and you have a relational element, we also have a spiritual life. We all do. And our spiritual lives are a process. It's true. They ebb, they flow, you know, you learn, you develop spiritually, you build muscle um, to develop your physical body. Well, you also build spiritual capacity and muscle, if you will, spiritually. Our lives are very much alive and very much in process. There is a flow to them, and we have the capacity to grow. We have the capacity to mature spiritually and to learn, and our hearts can change spiritually speaking. Check this out. The Bible's so clear about this process. It says, and I'm sure that God began, who began, the God who began the good work in you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until the task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. Philippians 1.6, you see that? There is a work that God is doing in you. There's a path that he has you on. Whether you know it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, there's a work. He's helping you grow in his grace. Now, that's packed. Some of you might not even know what that means right now, but that's okay. But he's helping you. There will also be a time in your process where in your spiritual development, you're going to be finished. The work will be perfected. It will be finished. When you open your life to God and the process begins, you know, with God, your spiritual life, it's so good because there's going to be a time when you're going to experience completion, which is awesome. So our spiritual lives, your life with God, my life with God, comes in stages, and they're very distinct stages. So in the time to come, I want to describe these three stages to you. There's three of them. In the hope that you can honestly assess where you are with God. So we're going to do a little DTR, right? We're going to define your relationship with God. Knowing where you stand with God is the key to growing with God. Knowing where you stand with God is the key to growing with God. That's why today's a hot one. Because when you know this, it gives you spiritual confidence. You're going to hear that word a couple of times today, confidence. So if you were reading a map and you had a destination in mind, remember maps, they were on paper, all that stuff. You had a destination in mind. In other words, you want to end up here on the map. Well, you can't get there unless you know where you're at. If you were doing this digitally on your phone, you could put in your destination but your phone's got to first triangulate where you are right now so that you can get to where you want to get to. Well, it matters. It matters to know with a fair degree of confidence and honesty where you stand with God. It really does. Because that's how you're going to get where you want to be. Does that make sense? It's important to think about these things. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to describe the three stages to a person's life with God. Like I said, we're all at different stages, so we'll be at different places within these stages, but these are the three basic stages. And as we walk through these, your job is to honestly just sit back in your living room at home, but to honestly assess where you are in your spiritual life, like your life with God. Get it? Okay, what stage is your faith right now? Let's get started. The first stage symbolizes a person who is checking the whole thing out. If you're, you know, at this stage, you're a spiritual seeker. So that's stage one, spiritual seeker. Now, I remember this stage for me, I was brought up um, Catholic, and I'm very thankful for my parents. I, I was, like, we were really Catholic. Like, if the church was open, we were there. <laughs> we were there for all the big days and all the even small days. We were there every single Sunday. But growing up, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't like church. You know, I was super bored with it. And I even made a decision that uh, when I was 13 years old that I'm, if, when I go to college, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, I'm done. Super thankful for my heritage, super thankful for my parents, but I didn't like church. I was sensitive to spiritual things growing up. I was sensitive to God. I can remember like when I would look up at a starry night or hear birds singing. I had a sense that there was a God in the universe. I remember the first time, again, uh, my early teenage years, holding my niece.
for the first time, my first niece, her name is Jenna. And I held her. I was really afraid. I was kind of, you know, didn't want to drop her, didn't want to do anything like that. But she put her little hand on the side of my hand, and I noticed her fingernails. First time I'd ever held a baby. I'd never, and I was just astounded at the detail of these little hands. There has to be a God. There were moments in church even as I was growing up where I would just sense like love would hit. I would get it. I would get the moment. Let me ask you, do you ever feel sensitive to God? You know that you don't really know him. I'm not saying that, but you're sensitive to the possibility is more what I'm saying, that he exists. Or you might not be there yet, Maybe you still have serious doubts about God's existence either way. It means you're a seeker. It means you're checking the whole thing out. You're looking for truth. Now, if you're in this stage, the Bible says some things directly to you about you. First, the Bible is clear that when you're in this stage, spiritually seeking, checking it all out, you have a lack of strength. There's a shakiness to your life. And the shakiness is your foundation. I don't I'm not getting in your face. I mean, no disrespect to you or how you live your life. I really don't. But the shakiness or the instability is real. In fact, you probably feel it. Um, Honestly, it might be the reason why you tuned in to church today. It might be the reason why you're checking out church because you sense that there's something that you're missing. And the Bible defines this shakiness as sin. God in his grace and his awesome power, has a great plan for your life. Well, sin is when you go against that. It's when you rebel. You know, we we shake our fists at God and we go our own way. You've lied. You've cheated. So have I. That's sin. It's, It's that simple. And when you go against God's way, there's a shakiness to your foundation. That's, you know, makes your foundation shaky. Your heart and your life at certain times just feel weak. Check this verse out. It says it really clear. Romans 3.23. For all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And why, why I'm showing you this verse is you see the word all. Well, that's, that's you. <laughs> that's, that's everybody. That's me. We're all born into this sin. It's not your bad. It's not anybody else's better. We all have this sin problem. And as you check God out, as you check out like his claims, you'll see that he's the only leader of any world religion that can forgive sin. There's no one like Jesus. In any other world religion, you'll, you'll see that as you go. He is the way to a solid foundation. Now, I know there's many of you in the first stage. You know, Verb is full of people that are in this first stage. You have some doubts about God. You wonder if he's really there. You've never really taken your faith. It's never really been your faith. You've never felt like you've had your own faith. Well, when you're in this stage, that's good. I mean, that's who you are. You're a person who is seeking truth. It's not a bad thing. Uh, A few nights ago, I saw the Broadway show, Book of Mormon. You ever see that show? It's traveling around. Maybe you'll catch it in your town. If you've seen it, it's a crazy show. Like, it's really funny. It's super irreverent, you know. And I was sitting in a spot, jam-packed, sold-out crowd. I was sitting in a spot where I could see the stage, but I could also see a whole, like, swatch of people in the audience watching. Now, it's really interesting to watch their responses, you know, because some of the references to Mormonism, and I'm not, you know, it's just organized religion, you know, as they were talking about it. You know, there's lots of different ins and outs. But honestly, there were so many people in the crowd as I was watching them who just thought uh, it was a joke. Like they didn't take any of it seriously, any of the God stuff. And I know it's the Book of Mormon. I know where I was. I was in a theater. This musical is a comedy. I'm not getting all crazy on you. It's far-fetched. The show kind of makes fun of Mormons. It makes fun of all religions. But do you get what I mean? I'm looking at the crowd, and and maybe you feel that way. I mean, a lot of people in that crowd felt like deep down, does God even really exist? Is this kind of a joke, you know? Maybe you feel that way, or maybe you felt that way. Much more, maybe you wonder about 
you know, the Mormons or the Buddhists or people who believe in astrology or the myriad of other belief systems in the world. How does this all work, right? Well, if that's you, you're seeking truth, and that's a good thing. Check this verse out. I love this verse. The Bible says, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good, that God is good, and how blessed is the man, how happy is the translation, is the man or woman who takes refuge in him, who seeks safety in that goodness. As you seek truth, as you seek God, you'll find him. You'll see for yourself and you'll taste that seeking refuge in the truth of God and the truth of the Bible is what it's all about. So be patient. (laughs) If you're here in this stage, you're seeking truth and that's great. You know you're not there yet? For sure, you'd be the first one to admit it, like, like my friend Steve. And you're not faking it. It's a good thing that you realize honestly that you're in stage one, okay? So that's stage one. Stage two is a Christian who needs to grow, a Christ follower who needs to grow. Now, this stage feels awesome when you first get into it. Somewhere between stage one and stage two, you become a Christ follower. And, and, and what that means, I'm going to explain that actually later and, and give you a chance if you want to become a Christ follower But when you first do, you're blown away by how great it feels. That the shaky feeling that you had is gone. It's this huge confidence um, for me that I never had. It was confidence in God, and that felt so good. Listen, I grew up in church, and I never felt this kind of confidence before I understood what it meant to open my life to an actual relationship, like an understanding um, a give and take relationship with God. I started reading my Bible. That was cool. I had some great friendships with other Christians, some solid, real friendships, and that was cool. You know, for the first time in my life, I felt like I was on solid ground. Now, I was a kid, I was 16, sophomore year, junior year. And whether you're an adult or a kid, when you first come to Christ, it is. It feels amazing. This stage feels so good. Check this out. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. You see the word trust? You know, when you you see the word trust, trusting in God, you understand what that means and you actually feel that kind of a trust relationship. Dwell in the land, live in the land, cultivate. It's like a farm term. Turn over the soil of faithfulness in your life. That's amazing, man. Then the verse goes on and it says, delight yourself in God. When you experience that for the first time, you'll see. He will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart actually shift and mutate and change. And it's awesome. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust again. It says, trust also in him and he will do it. Psalm 37, some of my favorite verses. It's an amazing, amazing passage. Here's the thing. When you first become a Christ follower, it's, you're fired up. It's so easy. So this stage, there's actually a couple of different little delineations. When you first, you're fired up. When you've been a Christ follower for a while, it's really easy in this stage to get comfortable. Like you can easily begin to coast in this stage. And that's, sometimes when you've been a Christian for a while, your faith can get boring. Some of you have experienced that. Some of you are experiencing that right now. You know, are any of you bored Christians? I don't mean bored with, bored with this talk. I mean bored in your faith. So just be real with yourself. Are you in that place where it's a little stagnant right now for you? It's a sad thing to be bored with your faith. I've been there. You know, it's, it's not how God wants us to be. John 10, 10, some of Jesus' words, he said, I came to give you life, like full life, not boredom. And I don't want you to live a double life. I don't want you to live, I want to give you life to the fullest. Live it to the fullest with me. The name of our church, Verve, it means enthusiasm. It means enthusiastic life, passionate life. That's how you want your faith to be. And you do not want to coast in your faith. So if you're a Christian, 
and you feel like your confidence is low these days, some of you do, there's a good chance that maybe you're in this coasting place. Friend to friend, I would say to you, you're better than that. You know, God has given you so much. God has done, God's better than that. So there's these two little subgroups in this stage. First one is newer Christ followers who are fired up to just be in Christ. And then there's the Christians who have gotten too comfortable sitting back in the recliner kind of Christians, Christians who are coasting, you know, even bored a little with their faith. But for both of these little groups, you need to grow. And that's where you're at. You need to grow. That's stage two. Stage three is a person who would say that they are a fully devoted follower. Great phrase, fully devoted Christ follower. Now, don't make the mistake, if, if you think you're in this stage that you're perfect, or maybe if you're in stage one or stage two, you're like, oh, stage three, that's the end. No, it's not the end. It's just a stage and it continues to go deeper and deeper. Stage three does. It's not like you've arrived. This stage just symbolizes a person who loves God with all their heart and they wanna honor him with their whole lives. So if you're in this stage, it's a really fun place to be. Let me describe it to you. Here's what the stage is like. Your Bible isn't just a book, you know, or a good idea or something on a shelf that's collecting dust, but your Bible is a super important part of your life. You use it like a map. You use it like a guide. You use it to provide solace and peace, like you read it daily. Now for some of you that might seem crazy, but when you're in stage three, it's like, no, that's my deal. I, I love the Bible. And it's isn't it attractive? Like, isn't that a cool thing to think, wow, what would that feel like? In this stage, you take very seriously the power of open lines of communication with God. A fully devoted follower in Christ prays a ton. In fact, their life is made up of constant communication with God. It's like this adventure that you're on and you're living this life with God. In this stage, this kind of a person has relationships of significance, like not just surfacey type of friendships, but they have this group of friends or these groups of friends, these pockets of friends that are significant. They have depth. When you're in this stage, you know that serving others is the example that Christ set. So you seek to serve also, and you know your spiritual gifts. Some of you have no idea what that phrase means. You'll learn that. And you use these gifts, like you use your leadership, you use your teaching, you use your ability to organize, you use your, you know, the way that you handle, the way that you interact with people regularly. And you use it in the church, use it in the community, use it in schools, use it in your family, all over the place. This person also loves, like loves the church and the mission to change the world. And they've, they, they do it one friend at a time, like they really care. That's stage three. So check all these out. These are the, these are the three stages. And honestly, as you look at that, which stage are you in? Like right now, where are you living? And remember, there's power in knowing where you stand spiritually, because when you know where you are, you can move. That's the, oh, it's so good. You can take steps, you can grow, you can develop new spiritual muscles in your spiritual life. So, so now, what do you do? How, how do we apply this? Well, if you're in stage one and you're seeking God, you might have doubts that you need to talk through. You know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, you might have to research some stuff or just ask questions. Uh, your online host would be a great way to start. You can get a hold of my email. You know, we can start a conversation or somebody else on, on the Verve staff. In August, we're starting an online discussion group. In fact, I'm, I'm leading it called Alpha. Alpha, the beginning. It's a seven-week, very painless opportunity via Zoom to get your questions answered with some good people. Um, like I said, my wife and I, we're there. You should consider signing up. Like, you should sign up for it now so you're ready for it. I know it's a couple of months away, but you can sign up right now at verb.cc and be looking forward to it. Second thing is you can just keep coming to church. Like, this place is perfect for you. Go to verb.cc. You've heard us say this if you've been around for a little while. You just click on the I'm new emblem. 
verb.cc on your phone or your computer, and you'll see an I'm new button. Fill that digital connection card out. And when you do that, a couple of things will happen. And one of them is that you'll get a text from one of our online hosts, and you'll begin a conversation about, you know, what Verve is about and how to get more and more connected. Very, like, non-aggressively aggressive. It's a good thing. It's not going to, you know, nobody's going to spam you or be in your face a lot or pester you, you know. Or maybe you're in this chair, this stage, and you're ready. Like, you want to step across the line today. Well, check this verse out. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10, 13. Whoever, you can call out to God and you can be in the family. It starts with a prayer. And I'm going to lead you through that in a little while. So if you're in that place, today's your day. Today could be your day, June 19th, uh, Father's Day, right? Well, some of you are in stage two and your next step is to grow. Here's what I want you to do. One, consider joining a Rooted group. We've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks. Rooted starts up again in August. It, you can take this, this uh, little discussion group. You can do it online. It is the best way to get on path to growing in your faith. Again, verb.cc. Just click on the word groups and you'll see Rooted there. You can sign up. Same way you sign up for Alpha. This would be a great step. I think a lot of you are in stage two. Um, another thing you do is talk to someone that you respect spiritually. Find somebody that you think is, um, you know, not perfect, but they've got it together. Again, you could, you could have a conversation with your online host. Um, you can, in the service right now, you could uh, email uh, one of us on the team and just get some advice about how to grow. Um, we would love to have that conversation, you know, and it, it would benefit you. But it's time to grow. It's time to increase your spiritual confidence. You can do this. Um, have you ever, have any of you ever skydived? <laughs> it's a crazy answer. I didn't even hit the clutch. It's insane when you skydive. And I want to, I want to tell you about it because there's a part that I want you to see that directly has to do with stage two and stage three. So you show up to this place and there's a couple of hours of training exercises and videos and you're not super, like, you know, you're going to jump out of a plane pretty soon, but you're not really in touch with it yet. You think you are. Well, then you get your parachute. Somebody talks you through the parachute, and then they start to strap it onto your back, start to strap this parachute onto your body, and that's when you realize that it gets serious. Now, a lot of times, I'm sure the people who are putting the parachute on your back are responsible, reasonable adults. I got a 14-year-old kid who strapped my parachute onto my back. It was, I had all these nervous, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. Then you get in the plane and they crank it up and the engine roars. Like for some reason on that day, the plane engine is louder than any other time you've ever heard a plane. My heart rate jumps, you know, and I became aware of everything that was going on around me. Then the plane takes off, it climbs to, to like 3,500, 4,000 feet, and then it's time. I was on a static line jump, so I didn't have anybody like on my back. It was just me. Your parachute is connected to the plane. You're not the one opening your chute, so it's like there's this static line that's, that's going to pull the ripcord. Well, the way that it was when I did it is you're sitting on the edge of the plane. The door flips open and it's just kind of going against the, 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 uh, the wing. And then the idea was that you reach up and grab the strut under the wing. The, the person given the commands, the, the wind is insane. Like your heart rate is way high. You're, you're half out of a plane at this point. They say strut. And then you reach out and you grab these two paint lines or tape lines on the strut of the plane. And then they coach you to edge off the plane while holding the strut. Basically, you're kind of inching your bottom off of the plane. And then as soon as you, you know, get out onto the strut, you'll hear the word colors. And that's when you let go with your hands. So you're holding on. Your body makes a big X. Because you, you, your, your hands are up like this. They tell you to arch your back. And then within five seconds, you're looking up. And that's when you're going to see colors. And that's when everything's awesome. But you just got to get to that place. My shoot that day was purple, bright blue, orange. 
it was a little bit green. I think it was, but it was bright, man. It looked brand new, clean, beautiful colors, you know. The hardest part was edging your bottom off of the plane. Leaving the plane with your body weight, my feet were on this little platform and the guy behind me kept saying, get your butt off the plane. The wind is going crazy. The door is whacking against the, the, the top of the, the bottom of the wing. Get your butt off the plane. This guy kept saying, it was hard for me, man. And I'm edging out little inch by inch by inch by inch. For some of you in stage two, that might be what you need to hear. Get your butt off the plane. <laughs> Edge out. Trust. Remember, trust. Maybe God is telling you, get in that rooted group this August. Get your butt off the plane. Maybe God's saying to you, you need to get involved. Come on, you've been in stage two. Don't coast anymore. Serve. Do something. You know, even online, you can do something online in our church at Verve. Get your butt off the plane. Maybe God's been saying to you, you know, when are you going to get back to spending time with me? When are you going to get back to being serious about prayer and conversation? When are you going to get back to your Bible, reading my word? Verve has this Bible reading plan. You can find out about it. It's so great. It's like an, a constant email to you every day that gives you different passages to read. We can help you about that. We can help you with that. Maybe there's an area of sin that's been sidetracking you, and it's like damaged your confidence because you just feel all shaky, right? Maybe it's an addiction that's tough on you or a habit, a messed up thing, whatever. God is saying, come on. Turn from that. Get some help with that. Get your butt off the plane. Those of you that are in stage three, once you let go of that strut and you, your body makes this X, you arch your back and you look up and you see the colors, if you're in stage three, you know. The chute will open and you'll be living, you've lived, you start, you're living the best adventure of your life because you're a fully devoted follower. If you're in stage three, you know the colors. You know the feeling of being exactly where God wants you to be. What's better than that? You know what it feels like to soar, to trust. You know, when I saw those colors, there was no more wind. Like it wasn't violent anymore. It got super quiet and I'm dropping to earth. But it got super peaceful because the shoot had me. Well, when you're in stage three, that's where you're at. For you, this message might be about you asking God, what, what's next? What will you have me do? How do you want me to grow? That's stage three. It's not over. You just keep going deeper and deeper. And as you know, God will speak to you if you pray that way. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous, great prayer. So those are your next steps. Stage three, if you're in stage one, if you're in stage two. So let's pray together. And uh, we can begin to apply some of these things. The first uh, thing that I want you guys to think about, especially if you're in stage one, is I want you to realize that you can make your relationship with God official today. You know, this, is, this could be your day, like I said, June 19th. If you want to step across the line of faith, it starts with a simple prayer. And if that's you today, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just bow your head wherever you're at unless you're driving and listening to this or it's on your phone or something like that, maybe you can pull off to the side of the road and just pray this prayer with me. Pray silently in your heart these words to God, or you can pray out loud if you want to. Just pray, God, thanks so much for loving me. Thank you so much for being with me. I want you to come into my life right now. As best I can, I want to live for you. I know that I am a sinner. I know that I have sin. And I also know that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I embrace that. And as best I can, I want you to come into my life 
and I want to live for you. And I want to go to heaven with you someday when I die. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, that's a huge thing. It's the biggest decision that you'll make on earth. And I'm really glad for you. Really glad for you. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for taking that step. If you prayed that prayer with me um, just now, what I'd like you to do is uh, maybe in the comment section, just put, I did it, exclamation mark. I know maybe some of you like to be more quiet. You don't go into the comment section, you know, or you're on YouTube or Facebook Live or even our CHOP, you know, the, the stuff that happens at Verve um, at our website. But just write, I did it. Let us and your online hosts know so we can celebrate with you. Even if you don't do that, it's okay, but it would be really cool if you would do that. Let's the rest of us pray together um, as we end this, this time. Father, thanks for today. Thanks for an honest look at us and our stage where, our, where we are spiritually speaking. And I pray that each one of us will take steps of growth in our development spiritually. This is a hot one because it has to do with confidence. Help us to develop confidence. I pray for those of us in stage two that, you know, we'd be fired up. We wouldn't coast. Those of us in stage three, we'd see the colors and we'd soar, you know, in an awesome way, not in a comfortable way. And then, Father, I think there's probably still some more of us in stage one who might still have lingering doubts. And uh, they, they couldn't pray that prayer today because there's still some stuff that they're working through. I pray that they'd sign up for Alpha. Keep coming to church. And, uh, Father, you will resolve those questions they have. Um, we ask those things in your son's awesome and strong name. Amen. I'm caught up in your presence
Hey, thanks so much for joining us today here at Verve Online. Especially if you're new or you just recently started tuning in, we would love to connect with you. Uh, we invite you to go to verve.cc, click on that I'm new button. And what we're gonna do is just send you some more information about who we are as a church and how you can get connected and grow in your faith. And we'll also send you a bag of Pop Rocks in the mail. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Make sure you don't miss out on that bag of Pop Rocks. If you're not new, if you've been around here for a little while, you know that we love to give it here at Verve. And when we give, it allows us to activate the mission of Verve. We get to serve our community. We get to do a ton of different things when we give. You can go to verve.cc, click on the give button, set up a one-time gift, reoccurring giving. All of that stuff can be done at verve.cc. Now, I want to let you know one thing that's coming up is next week is Compassion Sunday. We're going to be talking all about sponsoring children who are in need, who live in poverty, um, and how we as a church can help them with basic needs that they have. So make sure you're here next week um, for Compassion Sunday. That's right. It's going to be awesome. Also, if you're looking for a way to dig in and learn a little bit more about your faith and what that looks like, Discover's coming up starting in July, and that's a four-week online group where you're going to dig a little bit deeper, and you're going to meet some other ververs as well. So you can go to verve.cc, click on the groups button, sign up for Discover today. Also, we want to let you know that for the July 4th weekend, we're doing online services only. So if you're here in Vegas and you come to our building occasionally, don't come on that Sunday. We want you to enjoy your 4th of July weekend. We're just going to have online services. Absolutely. Hey, here at Verve, we end all of our services with the phrase, Viva la Verve. And Verve is just a word that means enthusiastic life. We want to go and live the life that God has called us to. So we hope that you guys join us next week for Compassion Sunday and all the awesomeness that's going to come with that. But until then, and as always, be Viva la Verve. Verve.